Hey guys, welcome to vlog number two. Um, hi. Anyway, uh, I'm on lunch break again. I uh, work at a Walgreens in the middle of Kentucky. Um, it's a, 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 for all our international viewers or uh, people who are just aren't familiar with the brand, it's a, a, a chain of pharmacies that uh, span across the United States. Uh, they bought out Rite Aid, so they got significantly larger uh, recently. Uh, I wanted to talk to you guys today about an article that I'm writing uh, for the magazine about um, learning a language for your job. Um, there's some uh, uh, potential goodies that are going to come with the article. Uh, I don't want to spoil that yet. Uh, uh, Steve, the vagabond, will release it in due time uh, whenever he receives it and uh, it may come out with the article. I don't know yet. Uh, it just depends on what he wants. He's the boss. And I'm uh, your humble YouTube host. Anyway, I feel it is incredibly important to learn a language uh, for the job that you are learn that you are uh, doing. If that job require if that job involves speaking with people who don't have English as a second language, um, all the time I'll get customers who are so weird, they they talk about, they complain the fact that the pen pad has options for uh, both English, French, and Spanish. And a few of them insist that it shouldn't have the French or Spanish options on there. That English is the country of America. And that's what every person needs to speak. There's a few problems with that, obviously. We're an international company uh, with places in both Canada and Mexico, which with people that don't necessarily speak English. So why sh And it is an international system. Our setup is what you see in, a, in Mexico is the same that you'll see here in Kentucky. So... Everybody has the same options, but people don't realize that it's an international company, so they'll still complain about it. And normally my response is, okay, I get it, just blame Canada, because I like, I like to say just blame Canada. And sometimes I'll get the occasional chuckle. This one time, this guy was like, screw Canada. And I was like, okay, there's, there's nothing really to say. Whenever you're a cashier for a company, you're kind of held hostage by whomever you're speaking with at the time. Uh, not to go on a tangent, but yesterday this uh, guy was talking about 1930s movies with me uh, uh, while I was trying to get back to work on the project that I was working on for, uh, uh, for Halloween. And I was like, Okay, just let me know if you ever figure out the uh, actor that you uh, wanted to talk about. And he comes back like 10 minutes later, and he goes on another tangent about another actor. And I didn't know who this actor was either. And I was like, okay. But it, it's really... It, it, you're forced to have conversation with these individuals. But it's also the other way around. Take, for instance, a person who doesn't speak any English at all. Uh, they come in. They're forced to interact with you in order to get what they need, which they may need. Whenever you come to the store to buy medicine or food, you, it's not just typically a want. You need medicine. You need food. You need basic toiletries. You need shampoo. You need conditioner. You need deodorant. Um, and of course there are going to be several wants as well, but a lot of the time you're getting stuff that you came to the store with a specific purpose in mind, something you needed for your household. And if you don't speak English as your first language, you are held hostage by the cashier and you are forced to interact with them in such a way that you need to know. I mean, that they, they, they you 
you're going to have to have some form of English to and, and the understanding of English, whether it be the currency or a very basic phrases, in order to get what you want or need. And the, how the cashier can help, and what I've done for the past uh, uh, three or four years is that I've been steadily learning and improving on my language abilities, uh, starting with Spanish, because we have a very high influx of, of Hispanic speakers in, uh, in, in, in Kentucky. Uh, over, the, uh, over the past few years, like, the population has really exploded, uh, because it's... Uh, actually, I don't know why we have so many uh, immigrants here. It's, it's Kentucky. It's a pretty cheap, cheap place to live, so I can understand that. Uh, people may settle here because it's a lot cheaper. A, a few, whenever I worked at Walmart at the service desk, we'd have uh, Spanish speakers and French speakers send money. Uh, well, not just not just those two languages, but like a number of immigrants would come in and then send money back home. They probably make a lot more here. They uh, they don't pay as much in utilities, rent, etc. And then they send the money back home uh, to their families, who they hope to bring over here. And those people at the service desk had to have a few basic phrases, at least memorized, in order to send money. While working in the pharmacy area, I've had to translate a couple times for Hispanic customers who... Uh, 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 I've I've had to, two instances come to mind. Uh, both times, the two individuals didn't speak any English, and they needed explanations given to them about their medicines and the reason. And one time, the reason why we didn't have uh, their medicine. And being the only Spanish speaker uh, or any amount of Spanish at all uh, uh, spoken at the pharmacy, I'm, of course, need to translate. Rather than trying to force them to learn our language, we because English takes a while to learn. It's not an easy language by any means or stretch of the imagination. Uh, in fact, it, it can, a, a few estimates report that it can take up to four to five years for you to, uh, to master the language through immersion. Uh, if you are, uh, if you speak, like, you know, something different, uh, from English, something, like, radically different, like Arabic, uh, um, any number of the African languages, uh, Chinese, uh, any number of the Southeast Asian languages, those languages are so radically different that when we take a look, when the, um, CIA put together the list of languages that were most difficult for English users to learn, those were at the top of the list. Those were at the category five. Those were the most difficult languages. We flipped that around. Those are going to be the, uh, the, lang the, the people who have the most difficulty learning our language just as well. And my hat really goes off to people who can learn a little bit of those languages to potentially help customers. I have this uh, one girl in the pharmacy I work with who speaks some Russian. Uh, she started learning Russian because she thought the language was really cool. And thus she's able to help others in Russian if it ever comes by. Now, I don't know how useful that it can be because it probably doesn't happen very often. But I've actually met a Russian person in the store who spoke very little English before. So if he had needed medicine and Katie happened to be there... That's the perfect opportunity to use that language skill. I feel it is incredibly important to be the very best customer service that you can be to the people that you are getting involved with. And I feel very strongly about this subject. It... That's why I have uh, um, I've written a book on retail Spanish, and that I hopefully will publish through our uh, Patreon account. 
I, uh, I want to give you guys the resources that you need to learn languages for the jobs that you have. I feel very strongly about that. I know, like, you can't just learn a language overnight. Uh, it can take up to, uh, up to half a year's study to become fluent in Spanish, and that's through m a lot more effort than uh, you would be uh, needing otherwise. You, uh, um, I'm sorry, that didn't make any sense, my bad. I'm, uh, I don't have a script. I, I rarely script these videos. And I, if, for those who have uh, watched this to the very end, I greatly appreciate you. Um, I don't have a lot of time left because I am on a lunch break, and I've got a couple slices of pie next to me that uh, I want to eat because I'm starving. But I wanted to get this uh, the, the vlog done for the day. I want to uh, do this daily for you guys. I want to uh, share Silly Linguistics' journey with you. I've talked a lot more with uh, Steve the Vagabond uh, recently than I ever have before, and he's a great guy. He's just so passionate about sharing what he has with everybody. Uh, the Patreon just has so much in it that could be potentially useful to just about anybody, and I hope to contribute some to that. Um, I'm hosting the podcast. I'm going to uh, direct a few episodes uh, on my upcoming off week. And, of course, you can always uh, uh, follow us on our blog online. And uh, if you want to learn more and hear from, more from us, just please uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, I apologize to the people who were confused yesterday. It was named Nebula Ad Nauseum for a bit. But I figured out how to change it to Silly Linguistics. And uh, please like and share our channel to your friends and anybody who might be interested in learning more about languages. I know I went off on a tangent there, but I really do have to go. I uh, appreciate it. Remember, like, subscribe, join our notification squad on the, uh, in the subscription service below. And uh, thank you very much. I will see you tomorrow.